Hi guys, welcome back to our latest education video. Today we're going to be discussing opening auctions, something that uh, we don't really talk about a lot on the show. We do tend to uh, look at some imbalance information that's coming out. If you join us every day on the live show, hit subscribe and hit like as well on this channel as we continue to bring you all of the education and all of the content that we possibly can. But uh, one thing we don't really talk about a lot is opening auctions. We're going to discuss the mechanics behind an opening auction, how we can use it as a trader, maybe some potential trade ideas even that will involve uh, the opening auction. Let's bring the guys in here and we'll uh, get going guys with this latest topic, uh, opening auctions. Uh, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, you know, a little bit of, uh, uh, I guess, variety here when it comes to opening auctions, but right across the globe, a mechanism that multiple markets will use. We're gonna focus on US equities here only. Uh, but something that happens across a lot of marketplaces. Yeah, I mean, first off, we just need to talk about what an auction is, right? You're talking about anytime you want to set a price or, or find an equilibrium between supply and demand, uh, an auction is a useful mechanism because in almost every single market, what's going to happen is uh, before you have an open, you have an opening print in the U.S. and it's going to be at 9.30. It's the same thing in Toronto as well. Uh, each market's going to have some kind of a mechanism to group all the buyers and the sellers together, uh, find an equilibrium price, and they get an opening print. That's important for a lot of reasons. An opening print is an important metric, but people who want access to liquidity uh, right at 9.30 in the morning uh, are going to a lot of times use that opening auction. So they take all of the buys that come in and people can either uh, say I'm willing to buy a stock at $20 and someone else says $25 and then sellers come in, someone's willing to sell at $15 uh, and they group all of these together. Uh, they come up with, and every market's different, they come up with an opening print that prints at 9.30 if it's NASDAQ. Sometimes in New York it can be a little bit delayed and then trading continues on through there. Uh, one thing that I want to extend before we jump into some more practical examples here, Sean, is this, this occurs for every single kind of an open. It's just not a market on open. Right. Opening auctions also apply on an IPO. An IPO could take till 11 o'clock to open up, but it's still the first trade of the day. So the auction mechanism is still the manner in which uh, the stock opens and has its first print, and it's especially important on IPOs because if it's going to go screaming to the upside, a lot of times that op opening auction print can be the best price you see in that day, Sean. Yeah, uh, that, that's for sure. And uh, I like opening auction prints, and we'll talk about that. We did have an IPO uh, today as well. But I like auctioning prints because, you know what, it really does sort of tell you where the sort of real money is going, especially once the market and once the stock opens up. Like you mentioned, it's not just for market open, but it could also be for stock reopens on halts, on IPOs and whatnot, always an uh, auctionable situation. And I think we have a good one right here. Today, NIO, car company NIO, uh, gets upgraded by Goldman. They had a big uh, quarter, I mean, it wasn't huge, but they were down to 385. Now today, 545. Look at this, there was 2.9 million shares to buy. Again, this is our trading platform, it's PPRO8, it's through Day Trade the World, and we have an opening auction imbalance locator. You can see here, these are all stocks that are traded on the NYSE, indicated by NYSE here, and indicated by the source column. You have paired value, so there was three million shares to buy, and they only paired off 500,000, so realistically, 3.4 million shares to buy here on NIO, so I'm gonna close the locator, call up the stock, and really show you, we were able to take a long here today, great trade. Look at this market on open trade here. It, this is what it is, 2.5 million shares. It goes off, no problem. And then look what the stock does almost instantly. Shoots from $5 on market on open, boom, a nice little move, all the way to 521. This is a minute chart, guys. So in about the first five minutes, you get a nice 20 cent move here. Probably a lot of those shares coming obviously gets printed on market on open, but people seeing the move up, enjoying that with the big volume before coming all the way back down and electrifying itself back to the upside. So that's just one example of if you're looking for how to trade, a lot of traders come on our show and they say, what indicators do you use? Technically, what are you looking at? Sometimes it's just that simple to look at supply versus demand, guys. And when you look at an imbalance locator, that's essentially exactly what it is. It's just supply versus demand. Right now, you have more supply. Here's WFC today. Watch this. Million shares to buy, right? What's WFC doing today? Up 4.9%. And you see again, here's the big market on open order coming through. And you're, I'll just zoom in just a bit so you can see what happens on the open. Here it is. 
bang, straight to the upside. So we look for volume and we look for open interest. We know a million shares is decent. Look, today it's done 33 million, but off the open, this first print is literally double or triple the next three or four minutes. So there you have it, WFC and NIO, two examples of why you need to make sure you're aware of opening auctions. And Sean made a great point there, and I want to uh, jump back into that for a second here. When, it, when you break down what an auction is, specifically in the morning, we're simply looking at supply versus demand. So what are they doing behind the scenes here, guys, that uh, is defined as an auction? And that is they're simply taking all of the buyers and all of the sellers matching them off together and then whatever is left over after that is the imbalance in the, in these cases that sean was uh, talking about there a lot of buyers so a lot of buying orders still left as an imbalance to go off at the market open so how can we take advantage of this and you saw with uh, a couple of examples there in both the nio and wfc moving higher uh, because of those larger uh, opening and balance orders. Once we get that knowledge, guys, once we get that knowledge of, uh, okay, so there's more buyers than sellers that are going to go off at the open, how do we participate in something like that? Yeah, a couple of things first. Uh, it's always important to remember why these auctions take place and why you have an imbalance in the first place. <laughs> the reason why in the New York Stock Exchange that they publish that is because when there's you know 2.9 million shares worth of uh, buyers who want to go long off of the open uh, in NIO, they don't want it to print 20% to the upside because there's no one to sell. So they publicly put that out there so that sellers can say, hey, look, there's liquidity. I wanted to sell a, a million shares today. Now I don't have to move the stock. I can just put it into the auction. This can have the effect of sort of mitigating the upside move in the actual print itself. But if there's excess demand in people who want to use that opening auction, maybe that's representative of buyers in general on that day, and some of them aren't going to use the opening auction. And then you, that's why you see what Sean was talking about, where you might have an orderly print uh, for 4 million shares off the open here at 5 even on NIO, but there was probably a host of other traders who did not use that, and the same skew towards the buy side did exist in the morning, and you see it rocket to the upside. So one thing you want to consider when you look at that 3.4 million that Sean talked about uh, that was involved in the interest in NIO, look at the average daily volume on the stock. Is it a significant number? Because the more significant it is, maybe it's already 10% of the average volume uh, that that stock has done in the last couple of months on a daily basis. That might mean more than if that you know, buy imbalance is a very insignificant number. If it was only a couple of hundred thousand, that could seem impressive. But if the stock does 100 million on the day, who cares, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. And I have another example here. We talk about only about opening of a stock, but what about an IPO? And we said we'd get to this example today. Warner Music Group, guys, will hit the fireworks on the show as we absolutely destroyed this. But look at this, 500,000 shares to buy, right? Look at the paired value, guys. This is what we're talking about when we have an IPO. So they pair off 7 million shares. So that means that they were able to find a match for the 7 million shares. But then that still left 500,000 shares to buy. What that meant was you were going to get that posted on the opening trade, right? And so look what happens here. And again, you know, it looks, it's a great trade, so we pat ourselves on the back. But uh, both Neil and I went long off the open because we saw that market on open and balance. So we knew there was some protection down here at the IPO price of, I think it was 27 and a quarter or 27.20. Uh, you get that. We instantly punch long. And then look what happens. We just enjoy the ride all the way up. So again, look at the time. I know it's maybe a bit hard to see uh, if we can maybe maybe make this volume uh, a little bit bigger here so you can see that. But 11.47, 11.50 or so, we open up. So not only is auction very valuable for the opening of the market, but when you're waiting for an IPO, you know, you wonder, do I go long the IPO? Do I go short? What am I supposed to do? But then this can often give you that way. If this was a sell, then I think Neil and I would have changed our mind and we probably would have not been so excited. I mean, look, I probably still would have gone long, but just the fact that there is this 500,000 shares left means that there is at least a big interest left in the stock to buy. So it gives us just a little bit more confidence to enjoy this ride all the way up here on Warner Brothers Music today on that IPO. What a great trade and a great use of the opening auction locator.
A fantastic uh, example, obviously, an IPO that uh, is starting to trade halfway through the day. Warner opening almost at 12 o'clock. It was about 10 to 12 when that got open. So still the same mechanism that's lifting that uh, or uh, happening in the background when uh, Warner starts to trade. The other one is halts. Obviously, when a stock is halted, it requires an auction to get uh, started trading once again. So lots of great uh, information there, guys, when it comes to uh, opening auctions. We talked a little bit about uh, how we can use an opening auction to maybe get into a trade or get out of a trade, uh, you have to understand who you're trading with or trading against as well. A lot of the bigger money, they're going to be entering and exiting trades only on the open or only on the close, possibly, using the auction mechanism. So Sean gave you a great example, a couple of great examples of the liquidity that's available in the opening auction print. So I hope you learned something about opening auctions today. Take it away, Valeria. Hey Brandon, and thank you for this great explanation. Guys, subscribe for this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.